I might not really paint it, but like, I think if I do that, then I'll really mess it well, up. Well, what I would do, no, don't worry about that. What I would do is, um, is I would draw it out really carefully and yeah. then paint it in. And what you can do with this paint, you don't have to paint it really thick. Because this isn't really thick, is it? It's quite thin, you know. So you can work quite thin. Oh, I'll have a look in a second. Yeah. Oh, did you just get an alert? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, apologies for the... Apologies for the slightly late start today. Everything went wrong, didn't it, big lad? Everything yeah. that could have gone yeah. wrong went wrong while we were setting up today. So I've got one of the boys with me today, and he's painting um, the Hokusai wave picture, if you know that one. Can I show them that picture? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, no, no, don't move. No, no, no. I mean, sh you can show them yours when you're done. Oh, don't okay. move that because it's on charge. Okay. And if you move it, you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, probably best not. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Junior. Nice to see you. So today I'm going to be doing... Um, yesterday I decided I was going to start a series of value studies of roses. Starting with white roses. Um, because they're pretty challenging. And um, because I want to get better at painting roses in particular. Because the, the subtleties of the values are, are very fine. Um, and uh, I want to practice getting better at those and also um, to be able to show the structure in the main value blocks and look at different ways perhaps of compressing the values to, to morning day and nice to see you to make those work better so um, I have hopefully you've had a chance to see what I'm painting today this rose over here this, I don't know if you can see that, probably not from this distance, but this is the value study that I painted yesterday. Um, so I'm going to be using Monsell neutrals today, just all neutrals, no colour, just value. But I often find with value studies, if you get the values working really well, it can almost appear that there's colour in the picture and um, sometimes you don't really miss there being any hue or chroma. So let's switch over to the cameras. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Yeah, the rose, the rose is, uh, is beautiful. I'm afraid, Pietro, I don't have time to go into Google Translate to give you an answer. Uh, I'm going to just switch over to the cameras, so... Um, let's get started. Here's the reference. Now, I'm not actually going to be painting from this thing here. Um, I'm going to be painting from the actual rose, but this is a photo that I just took of the rose. It looks a little bit low chrome, it looks like a little bit bleached out as they often do, but that's not a problem, of course, because... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be painting it with neutrals anyway. The values look pretty good, I think, in the photo. So here's the panel. This is just an ampersand 5 by 7 um, Camera's blown out a bit. The light is up, a bit up and down today, so I'm going to have to do quite a bit of adjustment. It's just an ampersand panel. Actually, let me show you something. This is the, now you can see, this is the one that I painted yesterday. Um, different rows from the same bush. Uh, it's a David Austin rose, I believe, called Irene, E I R, or Irene, E I R E N E. Let's bring the palette up. Palette will be useful to see, um, even though I'm just painting with neutral, so you can see what I'm taking from where. How are you doing over there? All right. Yeah. Still drawing out? Yeah, look. Oh, nice job. But do you remember what we were saying about this end of this wave actually comes out to here? Yes, sir. Yeah, because look, that's halfway across the picture. Oh. And it actually goes all... But I mean, it's a really, really nice job. But you probably want to bring that sweep up there and 
round to there more. And you can see, look at this, look how much dif distance there is between the top of the wave and the top of the picture. Probably wants to go up to about here and come round to about there. So it kind of wants to be like that. Right? So I would bring it round a little bit more, but it's great, really nice. Don't forget to um, tap the screen every now and again. Yeah, mum's there, I think. Yeah. Okay, I'll go help with shopping, and if it turns off, then I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Big lad is, um... Nina, thank you, yes, I'm feeling much better today. Big lad is doing, I don't know if you, if you maybe missed the start, he's doing a copy of, uh, you know, the wave painting by Hokusai, a Japanese artist. Um, so, let's get some paint out. In a way, um, this is a simpler job than having to paint a full colour picture, and in a way, it, it's, it's a bit more difficult because I'm going to be really challenging myself. This being practice, I'm going to be challenging myself to uh, really to push as far as I can to do the best job I can with the values. So that's titanium white. This is ivory black. That's in the extremes of the scale. I probably won't be painting anything as I won't be painting anything right down this value here, but. Um, it's going to be useful to have out just in case I need it. And they are actually neutrals. Just black and white gives you a very blue, low chroma colour, which I don't want. So this is a little bit of raw umber. In case I want to um, mix up a little bit more of anything as we go. Now these, leftover paint from yesterday. Some of the values that I was using. So this is value 9. This is just like, I don't know what you call it in the US, we call it cling film. It's not the nicest stuff in the world, not very good for the environment, but it is handy for keeping small amounts of paint in. So I'm going to have like most of a, a Monsal value scale out. It doesn't have to be a Monsal value scale if you're having to go painting along with this at any point, but it's, it's a very, it's a good scale. It's evenly balanced and a standard which is useful sometimes. That's the value eight. Now look, I think a lot of people when they talk about value they they take a, like a ten as being a black and a and a one as white. Munsell does it the other way around. So titanium white is about a nine and a half. So that's like a nine, eight, seven just to be a six. I haven't lost one. Yeah. And um, the reason I'm being so, I'm, I'm pu putting out a carefully graded value scale like this and be doing it so carefully is because this is all about the value and it's, the subtleties are really challenging. The first thing I'm going to need to do after I've drawn it out is do what I call setting up the value balance, so deciding where I want the values of the main, sh mostly the main shadow area. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three. <clears throat> Probably not going to need to go any lower than that. And if I do, then I'll just um, put in I may need to darken a couple of colours, but I can from, from these. Actually, well, I'll put a two out as well. This, I think, is a two. How is it going now? Is it... Oh, let's have a look. Actually, I think they're the same. I think they're both three. Yeah, they are. Combined. Hello again, everybody who has just joined. Let me, um, sorry, what did you say, Big Lad? I'm really doing my hair. Well, All right. the, the drawing is exactly like I can say. 
Uh, I watched some art videos and it said that like that you should have your um, hand in really use. So art video, yeah. Remember when I was teaching you yeah. how to hold a pencil and stuff? That is gorgeous. Really nice. Really good. Yeah. And then you can see like this, the top bit of this. Oh, what were you doing? Sorry. Um, I was doing just this bit. It goes from sweeps around yeah, like from about around. up there. Is it? Yeah. Look, that's quite high up the picture. If you look across, it's actually almost exactly the same level as the other side. Oh. So it's going to be like up there. This is a really useful thing to do in drawing is to compare it to something else in the picture, and then see. No, no, not that. No, that's fine. I think that was all right. The bit I mean is over here, so it probably starts about there. So you can just change that bit where it comes down, and all of this is is looking nice. You know, I wouldn't really change all of that where you had it coming down there. I wouldn't change that. Okay. Looked nice. You're doing a really good job. Morning, Alison. It's morning. Uh, yeah, uh, it's morning in the US. A lot of people who are watching are in the US, and it's morning there. Um, yeah, you, you, Alison, you've got the Munsell student book, I think, right? You've got edition five. Um, it's a really, really. But you've already done the Munsell scale. Um, I. You can tube them up. You can get tubes, and you can you can mix them and tube them up like this. But when I first started with this kind of practice with the Munsell scale, like a few years ago, um, I made myself remix them fresh for every value study that I did, just to get the practice mixing and really nailing the values, you know. And it was useful, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some oil on this panel. This is just a big flat hog. Linseed oil. How is the stream looking today, folks? Is it all right? Is it jittery or is it clear? Can you all hear me okay? I'm gonna cover the whole thing. And then I'm gonna Paint a lightish value over it, just to give me a kind of a, something to judge the values against. It's difficult to judge values against a white. Go down a bit from there against a white surface, but also just kind of breaks the um, breaks that clean surface and makes the mark get you going. All right? Yeah. Can we have a look? Yeah, I think I perfected it. Brilliant. Yeah, really did. Really good. So <clears throat> there's this there's this other bit of wave here which kind of comes yeah. just about. I would say that's probably a bit steeper. This I think comes down like if that's about halfway. It's quite a bit lower, so if that's probably about down to about there. Okay. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's just really little. Can you see how it's probably a little bit more of a sweep than yeah. that? Probably goes a bit more like that, okay. and then there's a, the other wave kind of comes there and then goes round, doesn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, that's that the bit, bit there. Like yeah, there. right. Yeah. So I would take that bit. Out. It's, you're doing a really good job there. The main thing is to try and get that like pretty accurate if you can, and then you won't have to, you know, after you start drawing some more details and after you start filling it in, then you won't have to make too many corrections later, which is always a pain if you've got to rub a load of work out, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I've learned how to, to be um, lighter. So yeah, you're doing really, really well with that. You hold it really light, yeah. Brilliant, thank you everybody. I'm not sure if this will be like my real one because I think this is good. But like I it's might good. I might I might use the paintbrushes but okay. Uh, but I might not, because I really think that it would mess it up. Ah, no, you should be confident. I think you'll be fine. Think about the volcano you did last week. It was great. Seriously, don't, don't, be, don't be afraid of, of painting. I think you'll do a good job. And you know what? 
Even if you end up, you decide that you made some mistakes and you can do it better, you can always do it again. Yeah. You know? So I would just go for doing that one as well as you can. Um, someone just asked me, do I mix and tube my greys or do I purchase them pre-mixed? No, I've never purchased them. I'd, Williamsburg, yeah, I've never used the Williamsburg Monster Neutrals, but no reason why you shouldn't accept that. Um, the practice of mixing and, ma and exactly matching a scale is, is incredibly good practice for your ability to judge values. Um, but obviously it would get you going a lot quicker if you just buy them by the values. Personally, I would say mix them. Get a, get a Monsell value scale and mix them. Yeah. I think it will always, um, yeah. it will always help. Um, so that I'm going to draw this out. Probably going to zone out a little bit while I do this. I've got a little bit of linseed oil. doing this about as long as I can remember is that I put, I divide vertically, not quite right, mm -hmm. just, just by eye and then horizontally too, just, and then f I'll, I'll find kind of what the middle. Mm -hmm. of the rose itself. to find some note that will work for the middle. Yeah. So I want it to take up, I'm going to do it fairly big, I want it to take up quite a lot. This, I'm not, do, I'm not working site size, I'm, um, I'm doing it considerably bigger than, than it actually is, mostly uh, because it, it means that the value areas will be bigger. Probably not going to paint the leaves. What are you going to say? After this, I might draw a cube. A cube? Oh. Yeah. Well, there's quite a lot to do in this one, so see how you go. Yeah. You know, one of the things I think is really interesting about this as well, we'll get to it in a bit. You see the cloud there? Yeah. Everything cloud. has an outline accept that. It's just a shape, isn't it? Two different colours. That there is the volcano you painted the other day. Yeah. Mount I, Fuji. I tried to do the, This is looking great. I'm trying to do the... I'm just going to do this actually. Oh right, yeah, I see that bit. Yeah, that's good. Nice. I love the way you're holding that pencil. It's really good. Nice and loose and at the back. So, one thing you might want to think about is, can I have the pencil a second? Yeah, sure. What he's done, which is really interesting with the edges of the waves, is they're kind of like, they're sort of like this, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as if it's like drops of water. You might want to try and make some of those shapes and see. Mm -hmm. Well, this you don't need to paint at all because this is all white. The white bits you don't need to paint at all, and that's actually not a painting, it's a print. So, you will have left the white bits. Uh, right, so I want to get the, the height, the proportion of the height to the width. It's roughly the same. Slightly less. Not that much less, I don't think. So that's good, it's going to take up most of the. Uh, if I just want to get the outline envelope.
person doing this well can have practice for a long time. Mm. Yeah, it's going very well. I'm surprised. <laughs> Don't be surprised. You're good at drawing. It's a bit hard to see now because it's a bit light. Yeah. Yeah. I think I went a bit too. I think I overdid it a little bit. Okay, give me a second and I'll come and check, but I need to get this bit done. Okay. So I'm just really trying to. Um, There's a desert in Canada? I had no idea. I'm glad you told me it's Canada's only desert because I actually didn't I actually didn't know. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so I don't I want this to be reasonably accurate drawing out. But I'm not gonna go into details too much. I just want uh that's too dark. What am I doing? Think poor. I just don't want to have to be making any major changes to the drawing after I film. After I started establishing the values. Try and get an idea of the structure of it now as well. A little bit. Uh, I do the leaves, probably going to leave the leaves out. to have the cameras auto adjust because it, it just gets a little bit distracting so what I do is I can control them from the laptop. Do you want a hand with something? Um, do you want me to come and have a look? Um, yeah I think I'll do alright. That's great. I, I like it. Yeah yeah. Really cool. That's really nicely. Um, so what I would think about doing now if I was you is um yeah nice there are two main areas aren't there yeah. the blue bits and the white bits don't worry about the differences in the the light blue and the dark blue just think of them as two main bits um so really you kind of want to get oh you've you've started kind of roughing it out haven't you mm. what how would you do do you think what would the best be the best thing to do next well what i was thinking was um, I would do the, the, the little bits on the waves. Um, Draw them out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, why not? Um, yeah. I'm not really good at them. I think you'd be fine. I've been practicing. Here, look, let me way. do it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's a good way to do it. Let me do a little bit to kind of get you going. It doesn't have to be perfect, remember. Can you move your head? I can't see that's the right. screen. It's this I need to see. So they're kind of, they're almost like little claws, aren't they, that come over like this. What do you think? Can you do yeah. a bit more like oh, that? Yeah, that's good. See if you can have a go, see if you can do so. Oh my god. I think you'll be able to do fine. The main thing is to is to go slow. Yeah. 
Right, so I want a um, separation of the light and shadow shapes now. Just squinting down and what I'm really want to be looking for now is um, an overall shadow shape and it's kind of hard to judge because there's a lot that's halfway in between the two roses start to get a little bit complex trying to get that. Because the forms are so complicated trying to get a clear division of light and shadow is not always a simple job. So I'm squinting right down. <sighs> Try and decide what belongs to the shadow and what belongs to the light. <coughs> Bless you. side is all shadow. I'm going to paint that in. Um, it's almost the same value as the background. I want this light shape to stand out but the background is lighter on this side than it is on that side so I'm going to put Let's go right down. This is like value three near the bottom of the scale. By the way, one of, one of the really lovely things about painting on a fairly smooth panel with an oil couch is that um, the paint covers really quickly, really easily. So you can make broad statements fairly, fairly quickly and change them easily too. This brush is a, it's a watercolour brush. I think it's a Windsor Newton Scepter Gold Synthetic, Flat Synthetic. What I call a, ch a chisel brush. And it's a bit lighter over this side. Lots of sign going on over there. He's struggling a bit. I have to rub out some of it. Uh, don't worry. I have to rub out things a lot too. Things don't always go right first time. Looks all right, does it? Yeah. That's good. A little bit 
bit lighter on this side. But it's still quite a low value. I'm not going to bother with any of the bottle, I just want to paint the rocks. Um, my drawing is out. Fair way. This just needs to be much lower than that. Now I can see the shape, it's obviously not quite right. viewpoint on the rose as well is slightly different than the angle I took the camera, the, the picture on the camera from, which is brilliant because it means that um, I can be out with the photograph and no one can say I'm wrong. <laughs> the other good thing you can always say about flowers is uh, yeah, the flower is moving an opening, so it's not actually mistakes in the drawing. I think that's closer though to this shape I want. Are you using mostly your value five to sketch the lines in? Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, I would guess it was probably like a medium, medium value. Yeah, and very light, with um, with another kind of a soft, uh, soft water watercolor kind of a flat brush. The one I used to, I love this brush. It's one of my favorites, and it's actually really a cheap brush. It's uh, what is it? Dale Rowney Graduate Flat Shader. I really like this brush though. How's it going over there? Oh, damn what? That's looking really nice. This is good. What? Are you not happy? I love the way you, you've, you've seen that really well, the way that it changes there. It's just a matter of patience. Seriously, it is. Don't You're, give up. Yeah, don't give up. You're doing great. You're doing great. Really nice. You could try putting a little bit of colour into it if you wanted. Yeah. You tell me when you're ready to, to mix some colour and I'll, and I'll oh, give you yeah. a hand. Oh, I'm very glad, thank you. Yeah, I've started, last week I did um. I did a workshop which is much much closer to what I do when I'm actually teaching. I mean, the, these sessions are just, this is what I happen to be doing in the studio today. But I did an online workshop last week. Um, paint along, if you like. And uh, I think I'm probably gonna aim for maybe doing one of those a month because they're, they're enjoyable and they're, they're free, you know. They're a lot more structured than what I'm doing when I'm on these streams. This is basically, as I say, it's just what I happen to be doing at the time. So the overall shadow is going to be somewhere around the middle. What I tend to do with these, I don't, these days, I don't go in with a really set value. I tend to put in what I think is going to work and then, and then uh, adjust it a little way to try and set up what I've been 
thinking of lately is what I call the value balance. All right then. Yeah, I finished. I'm just going to colour now. It looks, cool. It looks all right. But it looks great to me. No, no, look at it. It's very slightly lighter than the background here. Very slightly. And I, I struggled a lot with getting the kind of the the delicacy of, of flowers, especially roses, until I started painting like this into an into an oil layer couch, if you will, and with these flat synthetics, you can get much more. It's that something about the calligraphy of the marks. They they seem to be much more uh, much closer to the feel of, of petals. So I'm just I'm just trying to paint this as a whole shape, roughly where I think it's going to be this shadow. I'm not bothered about details. In fact, mm -hmm. if I get into details and start thinking about petals now, I'll almost certainly mess it up. So I'm I'm trying just to think about the general the, the overall split between the light and the dark. Hello Marilyn. Very middle of the road, there's like this area is a little bit darker. This area is a little bit darker. But this is still lighter than the background, so I'm going to go slightly darker around here. And what I do a lot, and I'm going to start doing very soon because I'm starting to establish values now, is um, I get one of these, which is just a piece of paper with a, with a hole in it. And then you can get, I mean, you could make a, a, a value scale to do this with. This is a Munsell chip from the value scale. Hold it over and then I'll find the value. Let's see if I can do this. Imagine this is the actual rose. You know, I would hold it over, angle this chip until the value matches what I can see, which would be about there, and then scan around the surface of the actual rose and look for other values that are the same, and it really helps. As long as you carefully hold the chip and the and the the color checker, the bit of paper or card to the same at the same angle to the light, it really helps you avoid a lot of value mistakes. So this is my broad light area and the very lightest area is I'm gonna wipe out I'm just trying to think in terms of broad shapes, not not uh, petals or, or, you know, I want the overall form, but hopefully to have things in the right place. How are we doing over there, big lad? All right, yeah. Yeah. Let's get the lightest light in just to see. So we've got a full range. One nice thing about not painting, um, painting in values only and not painting anything else. So I'm not painting the little bottle. I don't have to do the highlights so I can use my lightest light on the rowers. Gives me a wider range. You all right? Yeah, I've hurt myself somehow. You done what? I've hurt myself right there. What's that? I don't know, look good. It looks red. Have you been scratching it? Or? Yeah, I can really count, so it's really itchy. Okay, run and get the cream out of the bathroom. You know the one, the, the yeah. grey? The grey. Yeah. Okay, it's not this time. And the, 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 for me, uh, the challenge with these, I, I take quite a long time over them. I paint them very slowly. 
the challenge with them is to try to um, get the values working well enough so that you you kind of don't miss the color and you you can create a quite a strong feeling of light and even of the light that travels through the petals as well. So at this point I've, I've, I've decided that all of this is shadow and all of this is light and I want to keep that division now. So all of the values over here, like there's a darker value here, I'm going to make sure that that's very light still. It's very tempting when you look at a specific area to think, oh, well, I, I look at the difference between the light value here and this value here, and it's a lot more marked than I'm going to have it in my painting, but in my study. But, but that's a mistake because then you start losing the separation of the light and the shadow because the value range that I've got to work with here is um, a bit more narrow. Um, is your painting older? Eh? I can put the cream on. Oh, you're growing up fast. Good no, <laughs> That's quite a lot. <laughs> you're doing good though, don't worry. I can't do it. Do you want me to do it? Well, I have. I don't mind if you want me to do it. I don't. Yeah, but now I just need to go wash my hands. And while I need to go wash my hands, I'll take this to his I feel like I'm losing the definition a little bit of this shadow block here. Whoa. Really didn't want to go in that dark. I mean, a note like that, that far out, is really going to destroy the, destroy the form. And it's kind of, it's difficult in a way, this stage. I find it so, because I really want to steam in and start painting a rose. I want to start painting the, you know, make it look like something, but I'm still trying to find the difference between the light and the shadow and decide what is light and what is shadow and, and to state that clearly. And at the same time, kind of draw a little bit. So I'm kind of dividing like everything above here is light. But I'm still kind of trying to keep it, deliberately trying to keep a gap between, not get the, the values between the light and the shadow to get too close. I'm not necessarily trying to exactly match the values. Oh, did it again. Because I've noticed that a lot of the time, if I, if I lose the focus on the, on the overall value balance, I will tend to go in with two dark values in places in the lights and, um, and lose the feeling of light and shadow overall. And I think a lot of that comes from this problem of us having a more narrow value range in paint than, than there is in, uh, in nature. So I want to decide on what value this over here should be. Let me just go a little bit lower here because this. It's beautiful to paint on into a couch like this. You can get such kind of subtlety into the marks and the edges. I'm still squinted right down and I've got one eye closed. How is your cream going, big fella? <laughs> How does it feel now, though? It doesn't matter anymore. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, right. No, that's good. I've covered a bit Yeah, no, that's good. I'm going to keep on hitting it. So I'm going to have to yeah. it. You're going to roll your sleeve down, or? 
That's what I have done. I'm, I'm, All right. I'm just going to protect it with this sock. What are you doing? <laughs> that's m that's mum's sock. <laughs> so I'm trying to think at the same time as thinking about the batteries. I'm trying to keep one eye on the drawing. You see, already here, I think I've gone too low. Looking at these values and comparing them to the light, you know, I mean, you so easy to do that. I need to remember that this is part of the the light, not part of the shadow, and not get too low there. See, too low with value. Already it's started to happen. Really got to watch that. Can you do the password? It's not too really bad. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Looking all right. Yeah. I tried to do the thing, but... No, it's good. It's good. Why did you rub this out, though? No, it is. It's good. What? You're saying I can't draw? No. <laughs> well, I mean, that's all right, if that's what you think, you know. Can you draw it up to this bit as well? Yeah. So that's, like, just over halfway. Probably goes up to about there. You can think of them as like little fingers. If you can do that shape, yeah. then you can do more of them. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Try. Um, what am I doing here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Farron. I'm very glad to hear that. There's a lot, the values are so subtle, there's a lot that you could say is, is like, it's hard to decide for some of it if it's in light or it's in shadow, and I do a lot of back and forth trying to figure it out, but I, I want to figure out like these values around here. I mean, most of this is still in the shadow, so let's, let's just go in with the, with the shadow value. I'm going to bring the background value down a little bit again. You have to do the fingers around all the way. What, Luki? Um, the fingers, little fingers. So this is when I will get out a chip and the colour checker and I'll scan, hold it to the light. to one. Until it matches the value, rough general value for these bits around here and then see what else on this rose is a similar value. Yeah, and actually these bits here that you might think are about the same value are a lot lighter. So I know it wants to be quite a lot darker than that, but still showing up a little bit. So they're about there in value terms. So let's see if I go in about here, if it will show. This is the kind of the value, value compression. So the differences in value in the painting will never be as big as the differences in, in value. They go up a little bit, never be as big as the differences in value in in nature for something like this you have to compress so i want these bits to stay as being in shadow so if i put this value over there it should be way too dark i'll probably go up a bit from there because it's mixing
Didn't say anything. It was that was the paint. <laughs> what did you think I said? Um, what are you mixing? Because I was mixing something. Oh right. So I'm trying to get the right value, and I'm kind of drawing at the same time. Oh, well done. Perfect. Perfect. Well, what I think. Yeah, yeah, sure. Do you want me to check it? Yeah, sure. Give me two seconds. I'm not going to try anything. Because having brought that down, I, I find myself continually bringing down this background, which may mean either that the shadow is too dark or that I just painted the background a bit too light to start with. Brilliant. Yep. That's really, really good. Did you mix a bit of grey with it? Yeah, and I put in a lot of blue. Perfect. Looks really good. Do you know what the grey does? It brings down what we call the chroma. Oh. The chroma is like how intense the colour is, you know? So like a grey, like I'm painting with greys here, we call them neutrals. Is that high chroma? No, this is low chroma. In fact, this is no chroma at all. No chroma at all here. So I'm just refining the edges a little bit. Whoa, and he stood on you. And you see, look, these are all, this is value from dark to light. That's but high chroma, that's dark chroma. Now this is value. See, none of these have any chroma at all. Oh. They're all neutral, right? But um, they go from, we say from light to dark is, is value. We usually use that word for light to dark. So I'm fairly happy with the values I think at the moment. I'm just um oh the light's gone a bit got overcast again. I'm just trying to refine the shapes a bit at the same time. And I'm gonna sneeze. Ooh, <coughs> oh, that's me. Mm -hmm. I found a really good blue. I'm surprised I found it that blue. Oh, wow. <sighs> now, now I'm just yeah, thank you, Alison. And I kind of messed up. I, I was using two. Hold on, hold on, just two seconds. I'll be with you in a minute, Peter. Lane says, do you sometimes do a value study of your subject before doing the actual one in colour? I, I used to a lot. I haven't for a long time. Um, but I may I may very well... Uh, I guess that's partly what I'm doing at the moment, because this is too dark. Yeah. Because I, I've painted, and, and I'm planning to do more of a lot of roses. And... Um, All right. And uh, I think the kind of, a lot of the key to, to getting the delicacy is in the values. I mean, it, it's like you look at the be beautiful colors and the subtleties of the color and you think, oh, it's, you know, it's the color that makes them so beautiful. But I have a feeling it's the values and that's really what I want to focus on for a little while. I'm just bringing up some of these values, just a hair around here. I'm feeling that maybe I've just lost the delicacy a little bit there. Too 
and I do a lot. Oh, let's take that note out, that comparison note, because it's. I do a lot of this softening of edges and stuff, just keep it from getting too. Uh, are you all right there? Do you need a hand with something? Yeah, I really ruined it. Huh? I really ruined it. See? I don't think you did ruin it, but I think you put the blue in the wrong place. This bit here is there. I was trying to rub it out. Did you realise that after you put it in? You put it... So this bit is the blue bit. Oh. Don't worry, because this paint... Oh, I can't get it away. Yeah, no, you need to let it dry. Oh. We let it dry and then we can paint over it with a lighter colour, almost with white. with white, but leave it for now because mm. you can't do anything with it at the moment because it's mm. too wet. Mm. But paint the rest of it because this blue, that blue that you've mixed is really good and it's dark, so it wants to be here. This is what I was saying, so that the shape, I was talking about the shape of the blue bits. So it's kind of like this. So it's a little bit like... In a way, it's a bit like colouring in, you know? You can make this simpler and then it won't take you as long to do, right? But it will still look good. It still looks alright. Yeah, it will still look good. So all of this is blue. Okay. All of that is white. Okay. okay. Don't worry, you can always change things if you decide you're not happy. I'm changing this one that I'm doing now yeah. constantly. You know, when I, when I think I see something that isn't quite right. A lot of the time when I'm painting, what I do is I put down what I think it is and then if I decide it's not right, then I change it, you know? So don't worry about making mistakes. We all do. Everybody makes mistakes. The thing about mistakes, though, is to try and learn something from them. So for that one, maybe uh, would have been better to be a bit more careful about where the blue went. Yeah. But you haven't ruined the painting, so don't worry about that. You can always change it. It's only paint. I'm not sure if Mum and Casper are back, but I... Yeah, I thought they were, but I don't think so. I'm, I'm kind of coming forwards and backwards with this value, the deeper value in there, deciding if I want it darker or lighter, and I keep bringing it back up and then bringing it back down. And I'm still... Yeah, that's definitely one. I'm going to bring it back down again just a little bit. Really very small changes, but... Are you going to go and help with the shopping? Yeah, I think that's good. Good lad. down a little bit. And back up again. <laughs> and when I teach a value, like on my color course, that it, always, it starts with value, but I don't teach it like this. I teach it with um, close matching of at setting up um, cubes and spheres in shadow boxes and then matching the values very, very closely to what you see. And uh, the reason I do that is because it puts you in the right ballpark. But then beyond that, you soon realize that in, in nature, like, and even if you had a black cube and a white cube, you couldn't paint them both in the same setup and, and have it work. Um, because the uh, and it unmatched the values, sorry, because see, I'm right up to nine here, eight, sorry, the, the values from the darkest dark, the shadow plane of the black cube to the lightest light, to the light plane of the white cube. That's outside the range of paint. I learned that a long time ago and it surprised me. It doesn't surprise me now because I've got used to the idea, but a lot of the time you can't reach the values that you see. Oh, it's getting blown out by the sun again. Oh, if I hear a garden, I'm probably not going to go straight down. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's probably not there. <laughs> probably not going to be there. The sun is out and it's coming in the studio again. Oh, sorry, I'm not keeping up with the messages. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's, I think it's starting to come. And it's just, um, I th I'm happy, I think I'm pretty happy with this value balance now. So now I can work into the forms a little bit, hopefully, without destroying the values that I've got. And immediately he says that and goes in with a value that's too dark. But I'll try, I'll try not to uh, put in any detail at all until I'm really, I'm happy that I've got a good, a good value balance, and the the form is there, and there's a, and there's a f already a, f a feeling of light. Because what you don't want to be is doing is is changing the values a lot after you've started drawing in details because you know it just becomes ridiculously difficult then to do it you can't really you can't really do it if you've got a bad value balance i found anyway for me if i've got a bad, bad value balance and i'm i've gone quite a way through the painting that's it you know the painting is lost there are too many small relationships to be able to change them and have it work. I think that is them. You think that's them? If I hear Jasper speak, could you say him loud then? You'll know it's him. Yeah. Loud boy. I've kind of coloured in the blue bit now. Okay, can you give me just a second, big lad, please? I'm really trying to focus at the moment. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Don't worry. minutes and I'll be with you okay Oh yeah, yeah, really, really nice, really nice. You can try and if you get a smaller brush, like this one would be yeah. good. Where's your blue? Can you bring it over? Right put it here. The, the tablet, I know. Yeah. But look, let me show you something you can do. If you want to do the fingers, they call this negative shapes, right? Yeah. Instead of actually drawing the shape, you can draw the shape between. Do you see? So you're thinking about, not so much about the shape you're drawing, but the shape between. Do you see what I'm doing? They look like teeth. <laughs> they, look like, they do look a bit like teeth. Can you see? Yeah. So you can kind of make those shapes like that. You try and do a couple. 
You see, so you see how that's starting to get that same shape? Now it comes up, it goes down. All over the place today. It's an, this is actually an awkward kind of time to me, for me to stream, really, because um, the sun comes into the studio, and then it, it really, it, when the light changes, it has a really, really big effect. I'm just trying to set up the cameras so that a little bit closer to. Uh, showing what I've actually got here. I think I might come down a little bit and put in a few slightly darker accents. Small brush. You right there, do you want me? Uh, kind of. Yeah, yeah, great, that's great. That's great. Um, I just wanted Can to you see find the orange. The orange? Yeah. Well, there's more blue shapes, you know. There's like, there's look, around here, this is this is all a blue shape, look. Is there? Can you not put your head there? Because I just, you're right, I just, I can't see that bit there. Yeah, this is all, can you see that shape there? Oh yeah. Just think of it as a blue shape, right? And then there's a big one there. All of this is blue. Yeah, a lot of this, and, and, and these, mm -hmm. these shapes are kind of like this. You know, so you can add some of those shapes in. Can you see? Yeah. There's oh, yeah, another sweep there, yeah, and there's a bit like that there, it kind of goes like that. So you can add some more. So draw the shapes in just like that, and then fill them in with the blue, and you'll start to get really close. Do your studio windows have evening or morning light, or both? They're northwest facing, so. Um, Uh, most of the time it's great. I mean, the, the morning is, in terms of uh, the continuous light, the morning is the best time to paint, really, here. Um, but I do the streams at this time because um, most of you are in the US. <laughs> and I was doing them an hour later for a while, but it ended up being too difficult because when the light comes into the studio, it's... Um, you know, basically, it makes things much more difficult. Just a few darker notes. So that's the general value of the shadows. I don't want them to be a lot darker. But there's just a few little, a few places where. Where I really want to be catching the light is here, and that's going to be... Let's be careful. And not overdo this, or I'm going to drop the overall value. And I'm picking up a little bit of linseed oil right up, value eight. brother might be getting a treat that you're not getting. Well, if he does, then... <laughs> You'd be so cross. Yeah. And I'll say to mum that he's been very naughty, so he doesn't get his tablet. Oh, no screen time today. <laughs> so I'm working into the light areas now, trying to keep these values very close. 
So I'm staying up. I mean, this is one of the advantages of having a carefully mixed value scale like this is I'm staying up eight and nine, you know, right close to the light. So this is very slightly darker here. That's, this is an interesting bit because this value here comes up against a lighter value there and a darker value there as this petal turns into shadow. And it's that working is going to depend on showing the shape. I think it might be number. Yeah. A bit lower. Down to seven. That may be too dark. And then this. Have an edge here. That's too dark now. Tell you an interesting thing. There's lots of little white dots on this as well, isn't there? Oh yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. It's looking really good. It's looking nice. It's not the shape that it doesn't look like the shape. I would. I think that that brush is too big. Yeah. Look, because you can't do a thin line there, so your brush is just a bit too big. But don't worry because you can go around some of this with white paint afterwards when you're done. Yeah. You know, and uh, and and change it change the shape but this brush is way too big to be able to do a thin line with that's all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom just won't. I, when she normally gets out mom normally honks because she wanted to get absolutely hits it so I'm gonna see that. my little fellows it's strange the kids get a bit freaked out when any of us are out of the house because we so rarely go out now. They both get a little bit disturbed. We've got too much change in value here. That's looking a bit clumsy now. So I'm going to soften that. I'm kind of into the stage where I, su I suppose I'm looking, just trying to uh, making small adjustments here and there to. I think things look like they're not quite right. So we're in the light here, so this is up high value still. See, these values are fairly similar though, so this is probably too dark.
put some highlights in at the very top of the range. Oh, no, thunder. That's why it came out of here. That's why I mm -hmm. came back inside. Oh, right. I didn't even check if it was there. Thunderstorm coming. And also, um, the tablet turned off. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, you need my help, huh? Yeah. Okay, give me a second. So I'm going to try and carve into this with the background value a little bit. and refine some of these shapes a little. So, I'm sorry, big lad, I am coming. I'm just... Uh, I'm getting a bit involved in what I'm doing. What, what is it? Can you turn on the thing? Oh, also, yeah, sure. And also, I want to ask you two things. Uh-huh. Why is your resolution on 1,280? Well, well, 1,280 by 20. 10, 1,080. No, oh, no, it's 720. 720p. The reason it's on 720 is because if I try and stream at a higher resolution than that with this computer, yeah. it can't handle it. Because it's probably on 30 FPS. Mm -hmm. Look, your FPS. It's 30, it yeah, yeah. So the, the, this computer is not that great, you see. Oh. Now I'm looking at my light side and I think my I've let my values come too low here. So I'm going to bring them down, uh, bring them back up, sorry, before I try to go in with any more detail. I'm just looking carefully at this. It just looks a little bit to me like I'm losing, I'm beginning to lose the definition of the overall light and shadow shape, which would be death for the painting. It would just not work. Uh, no, this is a nice, very light bit here. And in little details, if, if, the, if the overall value balance is good, it doesn't, I always think it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to paint a lot of small detail to really bring something to life. Just enough to kind of... suggest. turns to the light and have an edge. Oh, okay, this is getting to the point where I, I will generally stop for a bit. Um, I suppose it's like I start, it's like almost like I start to hear alarm bells, like, you know, have a little break, have another look at the, at the value balance and check that I'm happy with it before I go any further. I mean, it's not, it's not far off done this now. Um, we'll do more on it. But when I start coming into the detail sections is when, you know, the, the, it's like, I always feel like, maybe this is just me, I always feel like the danger is the highest there, that I will do something that will just not work. Oh, need to bring the camera up again a bit. 
Bring the exposure up. We've lost a bit. Um, and uh, you know, if my focus starts to go, and I carry on painting, then I'm I'm lost. You know. Um, and I'm starting to feel a little bit of that at the moment, like a little bit like, you know, I'm in danger of losing my focus and starting to make mistakes. It is hard to stop though, sometimes. What's happening there? Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. The difference between, I mean, that's ve the actual rose is very low chroma, but it's still very noticeably different than, than when you've got none at all. Why did I paint that sticking out like that? Here, yeah, look, big fella, this is what I'm doing now is making I painted some stuff which I don't think is right. So I'm trying to change it a little bit. What do you think? You think it's all right, my rose? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's all right. Um, it wants the little bits of detail here and there that are going to lift it, but uh, it's overall, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with the value balance, I think. Um, I'll just do a little bit more work possibly around here to try and bring out these forms and a little bit in there. Maybe not so much in the shadow, we'll see, but definitely around here. I'll bring some form out here. There's, I think there's an opportunity around there and around there to bring some form out, which will really kind of, which will help. Cynthia says that you're a great teacher. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. That's very nice of you to say. I think that's how you say her name. Yeah, that is. So um, I'm going to stop streaming now, have a cup of tea, have a bit of a sit down and look at this and if the light behaves and it stays overcast now then I'll have a chance to do a little bit more today. Um, if it ends up being that this is as far as I can get with it then um, so be it. But I've enjoyed it and I hope you have too. James says, I wish my alarm bells were louder than your, louder than they are. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I do too, James. I did look at your work, by the way, James, and uh, it's lovely. Absolutely lovely. If you're, I, I would say, I'd, obviously I don't want to push you towards anything you're not interested in, but if you did want to learn a little bit more about Monsell, I think, I mean, your work is already strong, so, you know, I think you would really benefit from just some of the, the the kind of the learnings you can get about controlling some aspects of colour, you know. But you've got a really nice sense of light. All right, I just can't reach the keyboard. I just need you to move back a bit so I can reach the keyboard. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Sorry if I missed any comments today. Uh, I've been, I suppose, a little bit focused on the rows and um, a bit divided attention as well. Um, I'll pop through the comments later and um, and see if I've missed anything, uh, and we'll get back to you. Okay, thanks very much, and I'll see you later. Do you want to say goodbye? Bye.